Hey guys, what is going on? Welcome to another t Kinter tutorial video. In the last video, what we were doing is creating this, um, basically this start page, and then we were, we were running this button, and I was showing you guys how you can pass functions through the command, but if you want to pass a function through a parameter, it's a bit of a problem, and so this is how we get about get around that. Now what I want to show you guys is actually, like, add, let's add a page, you know. So uh, the only thing I would change here is we're going to say lambda, and instead of this, we're going to go ahead and call um, lambda colon, and this will be controller dot show underscore frame. And then what frame do we want to show? Well, we're going to show page one. So we're going to say page one is the name of this function. So um, and, and actually, I'm sorry, that's not that's not a function. That's a that's a class. So, um, yeah, so that's good enough. So now we need a page one. So this is how we're going to add a page. And you'll see, hopefully, that this is really simple. So page, start page. We're going to page one. So now let's go ahead and we're going to make a class page one. It's going to inherit from tk.frame. And we're going to go ahead and do tk.frame. Um, oops, we forgot in it. Uh, so first, we, we want this to all be under init. Basically, the entire page function is going to be under init for now. Um, there may come a time when you don't have it under init for some reason, but chances are you're going to program every bit of your page under your init function. So we'll see or init method <laughs> define underscore underscore init underscore underscore, and then um, as usual, it's self parent and controller colon and then tk dot frame dot underscore underscore in it underscore underscore um, self parent okay nothing new there and then um, let's go ahead and basically we're just gonna copy and paste this exact same label so copy that paste that and really we could have copied pretty much like all of this could have been copied. And in fact, we can even copy, we can take the button. So let's go ahead and copy this button format here. And then we'll just paste that same button. And instead of visit page one, we'll say uh, back to home. And then under command lambda, show frame, instead of page one, which is this one, we want to run start page. OK. So make sure that you've done the copy and paste um, identically to me. Basically, these two these two classes right here should look nearly identical. I mean, they've got a different name and some different text to the button and stuff, and the button runs different stuff, but they should look identical to each other pretty much. So we've got these buttons here and uh, and all that, and. Um, th another thing too is people might ask, you know, why do you? Because like what a lot of people will do in tkinter, which again we'll see down the road why this is a huge problem, is you can just say button pack, and then you can you can in fact add more buttons to the start page. Like we could just do this, right? Um, even though it's the same exact button, but when we go to run this, um, uh oh, what do we do? Back to home. Okay, we never close this off. Okay, we'll try again. Okay, so you see how we have like all these buttons here? And they're all showing up on the page. But the problem is with this tkinter um, functionality here. Um, the super wanting to use lambda, but if, like I was saying later on, when you go to pass through variables, uh, you're going to have a problem because they're all corresponding to the same object. And so that becomes problematic. So eventually you'll have to do something like this button two, button two, and then button three, button three. Something like that, so this object isn't being redefined every time. Because as long as you pack it, it shows up on the window, and it'll do its sort of function. So anyway, just just keep that in the back of your mind, just in case you decide to skate from my tutorials like a, a dummy. Uh, so page one, TK frame. So we pack the button, and that's basically uh, basically it. So that will take us to uh, to page one. Now, what do we have to do though? Um, with page one is we have to come up here and see if our CT, see a BDC app. See, page one exists now, but it's not loaded, right? So if you remember, what does show frame do? So if we come up here, this is show frame, 
it's going to go frame equals self dot frames and then whatever that container is that we want and it's going to raise it to the top well here's the kicker if it's not in self dot frames well i'm sorry it's not going to work so so we have to pass uh, page one no different than we passed start page uh, through before so now what we do is self.frames can stay uh, stay by itself but then what we're going to do is we're going to say for capital F for for frame in and then now we add a list or actually a tuple of frames so we're going to say for F in uh, start page and page one right what do we want to do with those? Well, basically all of this, these three lines of code. So we're going to just tab over those three lines. So if you're not familiar, you can highlight a block of code, hit tab, and it'll move it all over for you. So self.frames for F and start page, page one. We basically run this uh, code. And, um, and this is saving this, basically, to self.frames, which is this dictionary. And then later on, when we go to show frame, we just pass through, hey, I want to show this frame. And that's the frame that's shown. So now, if I've got all my ducks in a row, which, uh, you know, who knows. Uh, let's go ahead and run it and see if this if this uh, works out for us. So we've got start page. I oh, know. Okay. Uh, okay. Um, sorry about that. Uh, the thing that we did is originally... We just ran for at, like we just had you know the start page right, um, so what we what we have to change is like this is we're in our for loop, and so we need to make frame equals f uh, container self and then self dot frames uh, instead of start page f okay, uh, now let's go ahead and uh, run that one more time. Oh, and we need to change our text, apparently. <laughs> so our button changed, but uh, our text isn't really being clear to us. So let's call this, uh, so start page, uh, page one. Okay, so now we run that, and we see, okay, start page, and then visit page one, cool. Now we're on page one, back to home. So that's how you can make multiple pages and kind of navigate between those pages. So now what we're gonna go ahead and do is uh, is we're, let's add one more page. So since we've already got this for loop, um, that was really the thing, the major change that we had to make. So now let's say we want to make another page. So what we're going to do is um, come down here and really basically let's just highlight page one. Let's just paste and we're going to call this page two and then we'll call this page two. We've still got back to home, uh, and then we could also add another button here. So we can say back to home, and then copy this, come down. We'll just call this button two, and we say uh, instead of back to home, we can say page one, right? Page one, show frame, uh, page one. So that's that, and then here on page one, you could say back to home, no problemo. But then also you could have another button. We'll just copy and paste. And this one could be uh, page two, show frame, page two, easy. And then um, on the start page, we can add, so we've got page one. Let's go ahead and copy and paste button two here. Copy, come up here, paste button two. This is page two. Let's go ahead and keep it uniform and say visit page two. The rest of this can stay. Um, so then now, what do we need to do? Well, we have to take uh, page two now, and we just need to add it to our list right here. So comma page two. Let's save that, see if we can go away with this. So here's our start page. Wow, get over here. Mirror. So here's our start page. Visit page one, awesome. Back to home. Visit page two, cool. Now go to page one back to home two one now we're at one let's go back to two one back and forth home so now we're able to use as you can see navigate through our entire application here um, which is really something that I just sadly I, I, that was like one of the hardest things I could do and that's like obviously one of the most essential things if you're making an application you have to be able to go between like windows and stuff 
Um, so that was kind of annoying that we, I couldn't figure out how to get that to work. But anyway, that's how it's done. So from now on, all you have to do to add a new page is you create that, that class, inherit from TK frame, define in it, and then basically um, you don't have to have any of this code. You just have to, well, you have to have, you don't have to have any of this code, <laughs> right? Um, and as long as you do that, and you can add anything you want to the page. And then once you've made that class, you add it uh, to this list up here. That's it. So as promised, it does get better. Once you have the baseline, all you got to do, add the new class, um, add it to this, uh, this tuple here, boom, done, right? So anyway, hopefully you guys uh, enjoyed that. I was really excited when I figured this out. Um, I forget who posted, like there was like some example on, I found on Google of someone doing it this way and I was like, wow, it's brilliant. So <laughs> I think this needs to be on like the actual official tkinter documentation. Like why isn't it there? So anyway, uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed. If you, for whatever reason, weren't able to keep up or you've got any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them below. Otherwise, as always, thanks for watching. Thanks for all the support and subscriptions. And until next time.